and welcome everybody to a very exciting season of Carlin Brothers Box Breakers, or as we like to call it, CBQ. Cubed indeed, Ben. This is going to be a fantastic set. It is Pokemon 151, one of the most highly anticipated collector sets ever. It features all 151 of the original Gen 1 Pokemon. We've already opened a few boxes in-house and it is just loaded. It is it is really glorious. It's like it's like almost regardless of the value of the cards that you get your like from each pack, they're all just so cool that it's just like you're just you're just stoked to have it. Like there's a whole bunch of cards where where it's like it's just like this is just a rare card, just a simple holographic rare card and it's like I love it. I love it. It's so beautiful the Aerodactyl in particular has been one the of my favorites. The Aerodactyl is fantastic. The Scyther, of course, as usual, just amazing, as, glorious. Yeah, you know? Of course, as per yeah. always. Um, yeah. Of course, this is the beginning, episode one of season seven here of Box Breakers. This is a one month season. So everything that we get today, every pack that's opened, this is final score. So uh, we're gonna be able to put together the leaderboard very quickly. I'm so excited. You ready to break a box? Let's do it. As ever, let's take a quick look at the rules. Jay and I will be opening a booster pack from the latest collection. Any rare cards, cards that feature a star, score points. Scoring is very simple. We head on over to the current price list on TCG Player and determine your rare card or card's value. That value is rounded up to the nearest whole number. But the fun doesn't stop there. Each week we will also spin the wheel of energy to determine this episode's type advantage. If the energy in your pack matches the type advantage, then your entire pack gets a two times multiplier. And you get an additional point for each mon of that type in your your pack. Lastly, there are also three randomly chosen common chase cards that are worth one additional point each. So if your energy card matches the type advantage, you pull two randomly chosen common chase cards and your rare card is worth $3.75, that will be rounded up to four plus two points for the common chase cards gives you six points times two for the energy and your final score is 12. And now it is time for the Wheel of Energy, where we do have a small modification hey. to the type advantage uh, for this set. Inside of the 151 set, there are your energy card. The energy card itself, not as a rare card, might be holographic. In the event that that holographic card, if you pull a holographic that matches our type advantage, you will get a four times multiplier Boom. on your pack. If you get one of the holographic energies that is not our type advantage, that is just worth one additional point to your score. So you do get a little bit of an advantage, but what you really want is to sort of both get the holographic type uh, and have it match up with the energy to get that four times multiplier. So uh, without any further ado, let's see what we got. Let's go. Here we go. What's it gonna be for episode one? It is going to be metal energy. So I have to tell you, I don't know if there's a ton of metal cards in this set. Metal wasn't even around in Gen 1, so that might have tossed him a few bones, maybe with some like Magnemites or something. Yeah, it yeah, is it's... gonna be low. I'll tell you what you're gonna want is water. There are so many water Pokemon in the first generation. Lots of water, I think a fair bit of fighting. Fair bit of fighting, fair bit of grass. Yes, yes. Yeah. So some there, there, there's a good a good blend of diversity for different type advantages that you could get to work in your favor. This is one of the ones that less so works in your favor. However, that four times multiplier is still on the table. So absolutely going to be um, there. Some other things to be aware of this season, or at least in this episode, are our commonly cho randomly chosen common chase cards. They're going to be Ponyta, Polyrath, and Growlithe. So a couple of fire types in there. In addition, uh, similar to the Iona bonus we've had in the past seasons, there is one card, as there seems to always be that is worth a little bit extra despite just being an uncommon it is the uh grabber, grabber trainer card the yes grabber it is trainer card. so any of those will be worth two points just like the iono from last season there we go yeah i gotta say though com comparatively from an artwork standpoint the iono is way cooler looking way cooler. than the grabber which is just like a metal it looking looks like a, it looks like the claw from a crane game but on the end of like a trigger gun or something yeah. it's not very it's not very epic but i guess you can play it cue um, the uh cue the aliens from uh yeah. toy story the claw all right anyway Ben, let's get kicked off. Those are all the extra rules for this season taken away. We have our first contestant is going to be Anselman. Anselman, all right, Anselman, let's see. Just look at the, the sheer beauty of these packs. I have been absolutely obsessed. Also our sleeves, 
uh, for this set are really just gorgeous and glorious. Very I, fun. I, I've been looking forward to this set for so long, and I feel like it'll show, so. You might notice we don't have a booster box here. That's because they don't have booster boxes for this set, so we've just bought a bunch of ETBs. This is the combined packs from four different uh, ETBs. Uh, and that we made sure that each ETB came from a different, like, case. Yes, So it correct. should be perfectly randomized, as much as we can account for. There we go. Yep, so we got the uh, the Tentacool, the Rattata, the Squirtle, the Lickitung. Oh, there's the Grabber! The grabber. Oh, there it is, right away. So Two like, points. Look just how, I mean, it it's almost so seems goofy. Like, from, like a bad sci-fi movie in the 80s. Yeah. Uh, we got the Kingler. Again, you're starting to see these the water, water types. Water everywhere. Show up. The Energy Sticker. The Fero, absolutely glorious, but does not score. The Vaporeon does no score. score. And, and a Charizard! Right Boom! Wow. Alright, so the Charizard EX, the illustrator art version of it, is the best card in the set. I want to say it's up at like $130 or so. How yes. is this one going to do? Really not bad though for what would otherwise probably land you in bulk EX territory. It is going to be worth $7.10, so that'll round up to 8, and then 9, nine and then plus 2, oh, 11 yep. for 11 the grabber. Points. So 11 points right out of the gate. Off to a great start for Anselman. Very impressive, very exciting. Uh, and I'm going to go through, and just as we go, I'm going to highlight all of our rare cards because wow. I just want to see how close we get to a master set on those guys as we go. So we got the Vaporeon and the Charizard to kick things off Man, there us. we go. How perfect to kick off with a Charizard. It's never a bad day to open a Charizard, let me tell never you. Never a bad day. Never at all. That's going in the box. Next up is Emily Stock. Here we go, long time player. Now Emily Stock, is she going to be subject to the uh, Curse of the Mods? I know the Mods famously. Know. I mean, I think I think last season we saw a small uptick right there at the end. I we think did. Mods did mods pretty well. Mods did pretty good. Um, so let's see, we're going to have our type advantage. There we go, we have our oh, oh my gosh! Right away, so this is what we were talking about, um, the holographic energy, and right away, Emily Stock breaks not only the Curse of the Mods, but gets the holographic metal. So this is gonna be a four times multiplier pack right away. I can't believe it. I was like, it's not gonna happen. I know. Who cares? Look at that though, look at the overhead camera. Like, I feel like when you catch the glint just yeah. right, it's like, oh man, Dude, these, are, these are These people are just... loving these cards because yeah. they are pretty cheap and affordable, um, so. Uh, like you can just bling out your deck with them in any case. So here we go. We got the Vulpix, the Mag not even the Magneton. The not metal. even, yeah. <laughs> the Eevee, the Magneton, the Nitto Queen, the Victory Bell, the Oddish, the Energy Sticker, and oh no, oh, are we gonna man. waste our, oh my gosh, just a Nitto King to go with a four times multiplier. Maybe Emily doesn't break the curse. Unfortunately What is not. the Nitto King gonna be worth? 32 cents wow, and 32 just a times point. four. Yeah, now did they get, did she get a point for this being? Oh, yes. Oil. Actually, that is a good point. Yeah. Um, you will get it. Yeah, so this is the other thing to clarify. You do get a point if you end up having um, one of the hollow uh, energies. Right, so this will be two times four, so eight points. Eight points. So eight, eight points. Okay, so there points. we go. Yeah, we go. I mean, it just takes Make a little sure to double a there. lot. There you go. Well, it's oh, it was almost insane. <laughs> it was almost insane. This reminds me so much of the movie Big Daddy. There's this scene where like he arrives to a surprise party and like they waste the good surprise we on him. Waste the good surprise on you. Yeah. It's like we we wasted the four times on a on, on a, a Nitto King. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> it's okay. Thank you so much for playing as ever, Emily. We there do we appreciate go. it. All right. Uh, next up, we have Lacey. So Lacey, back in season four, our last single pack season, got a ninety point pack. So Lacey looking for a big um, repeat performance here on 151. There we go, yes. Let's I see. mean, just like Crown Zenith though, we're sort of expecting scores to be really solid for this set. There's there's only one card worth over 100, but there are a good handful of cards that are worth more than 10 at least. Yeah. So, we so we've go. got the Eyeball energy. energy there, the Voltorb, the Krabby, the Sandshrew, the Seal, the Golbat, the Leftovers. This is my daughter Addison's favorite card because she loves <laughs> apples. Uh, the Persian, the Parasect, Parasect, love it, but will not score. The Ivysaur, also so glorious, but will not score. And the Wiggly, Wiggly Top! Top! Oh yes. man, right, so love it. Very, this is a rigged like tank and heal card, so it is seeing a little bit of play. I suspect someone is gonna crack the list and do really well with it very soon. There we go, so that's gonna be, that is worth over a dollar, so $1.78 will round up to two points for that one. So not quite the 90 as we've seen back in Crown Zenith, but there either way, go. still getting a full art card headed your direction. There you go, always we'll a good day to have a Wiggly Top. Sleeve it up for you, and these cards are headed towards you. Bam, thank you for playing. Lacey! 
All right, let's see. Next up, we have got another Lauren. Another Lauren. Here we go. I'm just gonna pull from the middle. Oh wow! Pull from the middle for another Lauren. Okay, I'm neutral wild. energy. Why not? Well, you know, who knows? Um, uh, Lauren loves a dark type. So even though we haven't seen a single metal type, I'm like wondering, like, are there metal types in this set? I think I, I think do. that there are. There are. There must be more There's than none. There's gotta be. Oh, there we go. So we got another holographic energy. So they're fairly common. So this would just be worth a single point right there because it's not Here, the multiplier. Go ahead and slide it down. Slide the it down there. That's yep, right. There we go. Um, let's see what we've got. The Voltorb, the Krabby, the Sandshrew, Seal, Tentacruel, Snorlax, Sand Slash, the Horsey, the Oh, Growl the Growlithe will score. The Growlithe. Oh, it will score. You're right. It's one of the chase cards. And the Mew EX. Oh, there we there go. There we go. Probably the most competitive card in this particular set is the Mew EX. You can throw it in almost any deck and it can just copy your opponent's attacks. It's very fun. Um, so we've got at least one, two, and then whatever the Mew is worth. Which is super solid, number 151 on the set, which has to be, oh, it is on purpose. Oh, because yeah. it's, it is, it, it, yeah. They, the order of this set doesn't go by type as they normally do. Right. It goes by Pokedex, Pokedex. order. So uh, card number 151 for Mew, which is of course Pokemon number 151, is worth $16.63. So 17, 18, 19. 19 points. So our brand new leader is another Lauren. Well, I suspect she's going to get taken down, but in the meantime, well done. That's super exciting. Mew's a very cool card. There we go. Absolutely gorgeous and headed your way in our first uh, randomly chosen common chase card of the day. There so we go. Lots, yeah. of, lots of good gameplay happening. I will note as well that we do have five rookies in today's field, so we do have a lovely Olive Garden gift card that's coming to someone there we today. Go. But that's not yet. Next up we have Afropunk, longtime player in the game. Let's see, last, uh, in Crown Zenith they only had a four point pack, so maybe the Herbics are a little bit better than that for their uh, single pack season here. All right. Let's see, what do we got for Afropunk? Teardrop, teardrop energy. energy. Mm -hmm. We got the Spiro. The Rhyhorn, the Magikarp, which we you know, Chris, we're always looking for a rare yeah. Magikarp. The Cloyster, the, the Crabber. Crabber! There we go. Uh, the, the Crabber, no, Kingler. Uh, the Farfetch'd is really cool looking, but does not score. We got the Seal, which does not score, and the Marowak. Marowak. There, we go. there we go. So just going to be a three-point pack, I believe. I think so, and I'm going yeah. to keep my highlighting alive here with number 105. Yeah, just worth the 18 cents. And there you go. Well, Marowak, very fun Pokemon either way. But unfortunately, only a three point pack there for Afro Punk. Next up, we do have our first rookie of the season. It's Alex with an I. Alex with an I. Where you'd Let's expect. See what we can, yeah, there you go. Let's see what Alex can do on uh, their debut here. Oh man, they're a major Cubone fan, so there is a Cubone in this set, obviously. Let's see if we can pull one for you or for them. Uh, let's see, we've got the uh, raucous pummeling energy off the top, the Krabby, the Sandry, the Seal, the Kabucho, the Gloom, the Clefable, the Arcanine, they will not score, the Hitmonlee will not score, but the Jinx The will. Jinx will score, That's there we fantastic, go. what a fun one. The Jinx is kind of cool in this set because it has a uh, instant KO effect where uh, if your opponent's Pokemon's asleep, it'll just pff, knock it out, which is really cool because there's also a Hypno in the set that just when you play it, it puts your opponent's Pokemon to sleep. So you can see the little Wombo combo there. Wombo combo, that's gonna be worth $1.40. We'll round up to two points. Two. And once again, we get to bust out one of our fancy sleeves for you. All right, and make Keep note of jinx. this two for Alex as well, so we know exactly who gets the uh, Olive Garden gift card, the, the current leader. The current leader of five, though, it's a tight field for that for that rookie of the day. It is. We'll see how it all shakes out. Oh, well done to Alex. Next up is Jacob C. All right, Jacob. Only their second season playing with us, it looks like. Last season they did 16 after two packs. Can they do better with a single pack this time? Quite frankly, I mean, last season was, was I mean, it was tough, you know, getting getting points on the board and, I mean, 10 points, 6 points in two different packs. That's, yeah. That wasn't a bad showing. So this is somebody who's just looking to prove themselves here in the single pack season. They're trying to build a national Pokedex of cards, so at least one copy of each Pokemon via card. That's pretty cool. That's there a good we go. idea. We got the Grimer, the Weedle, the Zubat, the Golding, the Parasect, the Cloister, the Giovanni's Charisma. Oh, critical hit, Ben. Oh, you're right. On the yep, Goldeens. The Goldeen. There we go. The critical hit on the Goldeens. There we go. The, the Drowsy, Drowsy will not score. And the, the Articuno. Articuno. Oh, so unfortunately, the critical hit looks like it's just going to hit for two points. I believe so. Yep. Number 144 on the set. Let's see. I'm just going to go ahead and get my highlight Give on here. Give a quick double cheek. Yeah, 37 cents yeah. there for the old Articuno. There we go. We just want to double check because we did have a critical hit there, but only two points for it, Jacob C. Either way, well done. Thanks for playing. Next up, we have got uh, Methy? Methy. Methy! 
All right, making sure I'm saying that right. All right, Methy. Also, Methy's just second season, coming off a nine-point uh, rookie debut. Let's see how they do today. Oh, they got the type advantage. There so we they're go. doing I... fantastic. This is about all metal energy is doing for anyone today. I know, I know. Not, yep. a, sing not a single ponytail, not a single polyrath yet either. So let's see. Pidgey, Poliwhirl, Kakuna, Rhydon, Exeggutor, the Rigid Band, the Ekans, oh, oh, the Ammonite! The Illustra oh, this is going to be a good pack. Oh, no, the Ammonite, that's such cool artwork. And, and another Ar Articuno. So Man, okay, there, there we, go. we go. I love the Ammonite. That is fantastic artwork. I don't know about, about you guys, uh, fossil Pokemon-wise, but Gen 1, I was always an Ammonite person myself. And an Articuno person, so this is a great pack just for me. There we go, yeah, this is going to do uh, reasonably well as well at uh, $7.40 for the Ammonite. We'll round up to 8. 8 uh, plus 1 is going to be 9 times 2. It's going to be 18. 18 points. Which not, I think is enough for the lead. I believe so. Beautiful way, uh, uh, beautiful pathway there to the lead. So what is what is Ammonite's counterpart here? Uh, Kabuto. Uh, Kabuto, that's right, yeah. So yeah. I, I think I probably was more Kabuto. Yeah. yeah, you'd think I'd be more Kabuto because it also has swords for arms and looks almost just like a fossilized scyther. I was gonna say, yeah. I'm, I'm a little surprised that this didn't stand out to you more. It honestly, like, I do love Kabuto as well for that exact reason. Um, and there is, I even, in, in my head canon, Kabutos are just ancient Scyther because they're fossil Pokemon and this is just what they slowly turned into over time. I love this. It's fantastic. Scyther, if you, evolve, if you in order to evolve a Scyther into a Scizor, you have to attach like an iron coat to it and it gets a metal coating. And then there's also a theory that Genesect is just a Kabuto with metal coating. So it's like Kabutops had has the same thing happen to it, it's just the ancient version. Which I means, love it. Yeah, yeah so that's there so you go. cool. There that's you so go, cool. that's my uh, little headcanon for you about Scyther and Kabutops. Uh, let's see, next up, we have got Kelly K! Kelly K! In the building. Here we go. They're coming off back-to-back 19-point -back seasons. So, uh, okay. That is crazy. And I think 19 points as of the last pack would this would, put, would, yeah. Okay, so if Kelly K can repeat 19 points for the third season in a row, she will take the lead. Let's see if she has what it takes. Lightning Bolt Energy off the top. Got the Grimer, the Weedle, the Zubat, the Goldine, the Big Air Balloon, the Prime Ape, the Fero, the Snorlax does not score, the Sea King does not score, and oh, the, the Chansey. There you go. What are the Chanseys? Oh. Just a single point, I am afraid. The Chansey is kind of a fun card, though. If you take it as a prize, you can put it on your bench and flip a coin, and if it's a head, you get to take another prize card. <laughs> so that can be a huge advantage, especially if the next prize card you take is another Chansey Rinse Repeat. That's um, pretty amazing. Yes, I was watching someone online last night who managed to pull off that combo for like uh, three extra prize cards off of a single attack, which was really funny. That is glorious. Yeah, yeah. Good content. Good. Co I'm sure that's what they were thinking as it was happening. They're like, no way. This is happening <laughs> this right is now. Happening. I've got the views. Here we go. Next up is Akron Guy. Akron Guy. Here okay. we go. Akron Guy, this is our third season with us. Coming off a 17-point season, they created a Pokemon fan website in 1999. That's pretty cool. Which, there you go, yeah, that's very fun. We got the Dark Teardrop, uh, we got the Poliwag, the Ponyta! Ponyta. Hey. Finally got one, the, the Pikachu. Chase guard. Then we got the Farfetch, the Graveler, the Protective Goggles, the Arcanine, still looking for the, the, uh, the Growlithe. We got yeah. the, the Weeping Bell, the Slowbro, oh, and the Wiggly Look at that guy, he's so fun! That is such an adorable Dude, little card. I love it, that's fantastic. Like, all right, you look up the value. I shall grab a sleeve for us. There we go. Number 187 on the set for us is going to be our wiggly top at $4.95. Oh, Not man. a ton of. So just five, six points total. There we go. But still a man. really cool looking card. I thought that was going to be higher. I, mean, I, 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 I did too. Is yeah. Kind of a popular Pokemon, and it's fairly playable. So, oh well, you know, can't predict all these things all the time. All right, next up, let's see. We have got Anna. Who has been a longtime player in the game? How they do in season four? Just three points, so I think they are due for a big single pack here. It feels like it, yeah. Season four again, going back to our crown season season. So it's like the, these one month seasons. It's amazing how like it just feels like there's so much more power packed into them. Boom! Eyeball energy for Anna. The Ghastly, the Nidoran, the Paris, the Voltorb, the Onyx, the Dragonair. Maybe the first Dragon type we've seen. Yeah. Seedra, the Jolteon will score actually. 
Uh, it is a rare card. Kabuto, and then the Vaporeon. So look at that. Double Eevees, but still only going to be good for two points. Just I the two points. So unfortunately, did not beat out the Crown Zenith season of three points. No, somehow <laughs> managed up, to go lower. Just a tad bit shy there. But yep. either way, I mean, you, you can never go wrong with the Eeveelutions. Yeah, I mean, right. They're just, they're just beautiful. Go so grab yourself you a Flareon. Give yourself a full set. Yeah, Flareon was my personal favorite. Yeah, I know more of a Vaporeon person myself. You yeah. know, this, this guy right, right here. This guy. <laughs> All right, next up we have Narwhal King. Narwhal King. All right, Narwhal King has been SEG sub since Mario Kart days. Wow, it's a long time to be watching. Hope, hopefully our advice was sound. I know, I know. Back then, probably not. Uh, yeah, you know, it's it's hard to know how advice is ever going to age. Yeah. Um, uh, incidentally, though, my uh, my daughter's favorite book is called "That's Not My Narwhal." <laughs> And it has a whole bunch of like different narwhals, and the front page is like a really squashy tummy. It's, it's tummy is too squashy. Oh, I see. Anyway, so narwhal king, I'm sure you know all about that. Yeah. Uh, Pikachu, far fetch, shelter. Dude, look at the shelter. Oh, never mind. Okay, I thought it didn't have another. Eye. Never mind. Okay. 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 I thought the shelter was significantly derpier. <laughs> I was about to be really excited. Pretty cool looking helix fossil yeah. there for you. The Machoke, the Dugong, the Hitmonchan, which I can't believe is not a rare card. Really? It's like, yeah. I know. Yeah. I feel like that was like one of the the original ones. Maybe from Fossil. Set. Does that sound right? I think so, yeah. We've got the Oddish, the, which won't score, the Grimer, which won't score, and the Marowak. And the Marowak, Marowak so just yeah. going to be a single point, unfortunately, for Narwhal King. Boy, someone is going to break free here at some point. I know, it's point. like the potential we're, energy is we're at, building. We're at 18 points, but I feel like something big is on the way. Can someone jump ahead? Next up, we have Chris. Chris! Training for his first marathon, or at least whenever we started, which was back in Season 4. Yeah, so, so, so probably seven probably months Probably ran ago. that marathon by now. We need some new fun packs. I know, I know, yeah. I, I too have run my marathon since then. Oh, oh there we go. There we go, another uh, foil energy. I'm not sure if you can tell, but it's there. So that'll be at least one point. We'll move it down here. We've got the old Amber. That evolves into the Aerodactyl, which we have not seen yet. Oh man, I do love awesome. the Aerodactyl, yeah. I love this Magmar art. Uh, the Shelter, the Tentacruel, the Snorlax, the Sand Slash, the Farfetch, the Nidra, and the Vile oh, it's just the Oh, Vileplume. the Vile, and the Vile Bloom. Just Vile Bloom. There we go. Number 45 go. on the set. two-point pack, I'm thinking. Yeah, I believe so. Yeah, 24 cents there. 24 but it is cents. interesting that even like the, the rares, you know, it's like normally we're used to like rares being worth like six cents, seven cents, eight cents, and it feels like some of the ones that are like less prominent still like, 24 cents? 24 it's like, okay, cents. Okay. Yeah. I think like, the least valuable card was like six cents or something. I and mean, that okay. was a common card. Now we last set, I think our the least valuable rare card was like six cents. Yeah, six or five cents. Yeah, six yeah. or five cents. Yeah. So like everything's a little bit higher. Uh, all right, next up we have Lando Mando. I literally said that combination of words last night at my house because my son found a Lando. Uh, action figure in the basement, and I was like, Lando! And that reminded me of Mando, and anyway, that's that story. This is a rookie. There we go. So they just had to be two points to get the Olive Garden card at this point. Yep, so Alex with an I over there thinking like, okay, what's gonna happen here? It's gonna be hard not to beat it, but we'll see. Lando Mando. Lando Mando. Let's see what we got for, we got the, the Salad Energy there, the Goldeen, the Ghastly, the Nidoran, the Paris, the Golduck, the Pinsir, another one that I feel like could have been a rare card. Yep. Bill's Transfer, uh, the oh. Nidoran again. Oh, oh critical got, hit. got a critical hit, there we go. Kabam. The Golbat and a close out and with the Nidoking. And a Nidoking, the Nidoking is trolling, man. It really is. Wow. So just a whopping, uh, yeah, two points there. Wow, so that's gonna be two. So actually we're tied for Rookie of the Day, so we actually, what's the value? Value on the Nitto King mirror? Let's take a look. Number 34 is going to be 32 cents. 32 cents. All right, so that is the value to. Well, I don't know if that's the value to be. I can't remember what Alex did. But there you go, anyway. It's a hope that I'm thinking by the end it won't matter unless we have five rookies. I'll get two points. That'd be kind of crazy. That would be pretty wild. But for the moment, uh, next up we have Blood Vamp, rival of Andr Andr Adria Andriana. A A Andriana? Andriana. Nice. Yeah, there we go. Andriana. He must be like some other sort of vampire or something. <laughs> or something. I had to guess based on the reasons we often choose rivals in this game. We got the Fireball Energy. Coughing. Tangela. Grimer. There's been so many Grimers. There has been, yeah. Psyduck, Giovanni's Charisma, Rhydon, Rigid Band. Ooh, the Electro does score. The, the Shelter does one. not. And on the Starmie! Starmie. It's kind of like the art on, but... Yeah, the, the art on this one, we haven't seen it yet, but there's a Ditto card, and I feel like it kind of reminds me of the Ditto mm, as well. Yes. 
I wonder what Ditto would look like as a Starman. Like, would they have that derpy smile on it and be like, hey, I have a mouth now. Uh, instead of like the red ruby in the middle? Yeah. <laughs> Possibly so. So there we go. So just just uh, two points there for the Electrode and the Starmie. Yeah, if you want to mark them off. I'm going to mark master them off. Set. Yep, 121 and 101 on the list. There you go. For Blood Vamp, it's going to be two points on the season. Someone's going to get something big here. I can just feel it. I can just feel it, Ben. All right, next up we have Bubsy. Bubsy! Oh, that was me? All right, all right. Who knows? Can't keep track of these things. I know. All right, Bubsy. How'd Bubsy do last season? Bubsy did 12 points last season. They did four, no, uh, 25 points in the Crown Zenith season. So they did pretty well last time we had a single packer. All right, let's see. We got the Cubone, yep. the Vulpix, the Magnemite, the Caterpie, oh, the, the Grabber. Grabber. Well, that'll be two. The Kingler, the Energy Sticker, the Muck Whoa. will not score, the Seal will not score, and the, the Kabutops. See, there you go. Look at that. Look at those glorious blades for arms. Blades for arms, indeed. The way things should be. So just three points there for the Kabutops and the Grabber. Let, the me, grabber. let me be sure to grab that number 141 for Gaboo Tops. There you I'll go. put it on my list. Bam, three points. Solid. Not gonna get you anywhere. At some point we'll have Big Steve in this lineup as well. We try and get him in the first episode. So well that could recontextualize things. Maybe all these two point things are gonna be great if Steven just gets a single point or something. It always seems possible. It it that, would, that would really change things up quite a bit. It would. Next up we have Karen. Karen! Karen coming off of a 10 point season. Her crown the end of the season was eight points, so can she beat that one? Let's see. Let's see, can we get a um, metal energy? No, but we do get a foil energy and fire, so that's at least one extra point, so we'll move it down here. Then we have the Charmander, which is that the first Charmander we've seen? Might be, might be, it yeah. Might be the Spearow, the Rhydon, the Carp, the Duck, Pinsir, Bill's Transfer, Tentacle, Gloom, oh, and Electrode. Electro. There we go, so just a two point pack, unfortunately, for Karen. Boy, and holding again, strong at 18 points for the lead right now. I know, I know. Like I said, I feel like that potential energy is just building. And I feel like our pull rates with the ETBs tend to be pretty strong. It just know. means maybe it's like the order in which we're grabbing them out of the box here, but we'll find out really soon. Right, next up is Fran! Fran! Fran is coming off a very uh, formidable 26 point season. There we go. We got the Dark, dark Teardrop, teardrop here Energy. We, go. we got the, the Vulpix, Vulpix, the Magnemite, the Caterpie, the Eevee, the Cycling Rose, the, the Scyther. Scyther. There we go. The Charmeleon. That's pretty fun. The yeah. Clefairy will not score. The Mankey will not score. And the Mewtwo. Mewtwo. Oh, man. The Mewtwo looks awesome. That is a really cool one. Number 150 on the set. Only going to be worth about a point, though, as it were. Yeah, as it were, indeed. There we go. All right. Well, good job, friend. At least you have Mewtwo, the most powerful Pokemon in the world. Next up, we have Leroy. This is our next um, Rookie of the Day contender. Their first deck was Machamp for base set. Second was Palkia V-Star, so it's a big gap. Palkia V-Star was like last year. All right, Mr. Jenkins, let's see what we can do for All you. Right, yeah, I get it, I get it. Yeah, there we go. I bet he hasn't heard that one before. Probably, at all. probably not a whole bunch of times not. everywhere he goes. All right, thumbs up. Ready, guys? Let's do this. Leroy Jenkins! Oh my god, he just ran in. All he has to do is break two points to be getting the gift card. Dark Teardrop. Can right, we do it? Baby, the Grimer, it's Ben the Harder, Weedle. Zubat, Rhydon, Executor, Rigid Man, the Ma- oh, oh! The Basic Energy and the Beedrill. So that's a gold. This is a different- This is gold energy. Bomb, 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 bomb. That's pretty cool. Uh, so what is that one gonna be? That's probably got a little bit, I'm guessing more like a 10 point kind of value, but we'll see. It might literally be the very last card in the set. Dang. It, it is a hyper rare, number 207 worth $9.65. Called it 10. Ooh, 10 points for you with 11 with the bead drill. 11 with the bead drill be there. Be sure to sleeve that up. All right, well that's gonna put you in first place for the Olive Garden gift card. There we go, with 11 You're points. You're welcome. Yep, I know. This is the second set in a row to have awesome manky artwork. Like, what is going on? On. Maybe he's just a cool, just, just a cool a one, one, maybe little, apparently. Maybe little, like an underrated Pokemon. Right? That little pig monkey guy. It's fantastic. All those manky stands out there being like, don't be sleeping on my boy. I know, I know. Alright, next up we have got Goddess Princess. It's quite the title. Goddess Princess? Goddess Princess, both. Man. Alright, next, uh, so let's see, they're coming off a 23-point season. 
can they do, how can they do here? Can they jump into the lead? Wow, psychic energy again. We've got Anish the Mankey, Meowth, Execute, Golbat, Leftovers, Addy's favorite, the Persian, the Sand Shrew, oh, is that a critical hit? It is, critical hit on the Golbat, and oh, oh the Zapdos! Lord Zapdos! Zapdos strikes from the sky with a two times multiplier, that's exciting. Let's see, number here we go. on the set. Nothing that like one's gonna last, be worth something. Last page energy, and we got the critical hit, which is gonna be even better for a new first place contender for us. $10.43 for the Zapdos will round up to 11 times two is 22 Man, points. 22 points, so back to back seasons at 23 and 22 points, that's awesome. Currently in the lead. Someone to look, look out for in the future. Now we have Goddess Princess, Leader, goddess, princess, leader. Add a little, add a, a little, yeah. a little That's extra a notation there to the title. I know. Here we go. We've got Reagan uh, coming in now. Now it could be the case. Sometimes I feel like we get a new leader, and it's like that was crazy, and then boom, they get knocked out. Yeah, and, and then it's like the very next card. Yeah, yeah. like the dam has broken. All right, so we're we're about to Let's find see. out whether or not that is the case. Code card off to the side. We got the Grass salad energy to get there. us going. We got the Rhyhorn, the Magikarp, the Oddish, the Manky, the Hypno, the, the Poly Poly Rath. Rath. There we go. The Pidgeot, the Dome Fossil will not score, the Charmeleon will not score, and the, the Mr. Mr. Mime. Mr. Mime holds the title of least valuable rare card this set. Oh man, that's yeah. kind of a bummer. I, I think Mr. Mime is really cool. Yes, same. I, 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 was, I was curious what it was. Yeah, it is uh, 17 cents there. Hey, so. that's still better than the Jump Pluff from last season. At five, yep. yeah. So yeah. it's going to be a two-point pack there for Reagan. Not actually going to uh, do that Mold Breaker where all of a sudden they just jump out in front again. So uh, Goddess Princess Leader is going to hold on there. All right, next up we have Sydney Steel. Sydney Steel. Who's turning for a marathon? Or at least they were back in season three. Goodness they gracious. probably run it by now. I am very impressed at the percentage of the box bracer box breakers patronage that are marathon runners. I know, it's impressive. Look it at this. Impressive. How many are gonna be Oddish Mankey? That's like the third in a row. Yeah, the execute, Meowth, the, the bill execute. transfer, the goal bat. The goal bat, yeah, we had just had a critical hit on that. The Hitmonchan, the Gloom, and the, the Electrode. Electro. Boy, Man. the electrodes are stacking up. They really truly are. It's kind of just like the demise of our I mean, what do they think they are? Mr. Mime? I know, jeez. There we go. Be more common. It's just like the game. You just you're like, oh, is this a Pokeball? Nope, it's an Electrode. It's Explode. Electro. Oh, great. <laughs> yeah, Go back to the Pokemon funny. Center, loser. All right, next up, we have uh, below average gaming dad. Below average gaming dad. Who I feel like that's a new name. I don't recognize that it. That is. So. Oh, Ben, you should because apparently you were his first friend back on Wizards Unite. No way. Yeah. Don't well, you remember those days? I think I, that game is completely gone now. Is it really? Okay, well, who'd have thought? Yeah. Um, that was, yeah, you were always into Pokemon Go, and I played some Wizards Unite kind of hard. I mean, so. Wizards Unite was really fun for uh, like a couple weeks there. Days, yeah. hours, minutes. Oh, well. Oh, well. It's fun while it lasted. Here we go. Now, uh, we go. Uh, below average gaming guide is another Rookie of the Day contender, hoping to beat 11 points. There we go. So we got the Geodude, the Jigglypuff, the Staryu, the Charmander, the Charmeleon, the Parasect, the Giovanni's Charisma, the Lickitung will not score. Oh! Gold switch! I love it! Amazing, and the Beedrill! And the Beedrill on top. This could actually do it. That could be worth more than 11. Uh, switch, obviously, one of the few cards that's basically been legal since the beginning and uh, is always playable. So, okay, so the Gold Switch, unfortunately, uh, it is worth a bit, but not a, not like a ton. So $8.29, oh, we'll round up to 9, nine and then 10. 10. So 10 oh, points. they're just but barely missing out on the gift man, card. And so below, but yeah, just just barely below average gaming dad. Oh. Um, that's just too bad for you there, but really still a beautiful card really? that is now Above headed. average rookie performance. But yes, absolutely. Yeah. That Switch headed your way. Either Congratulations. Way. Throw that in any deck you want. You'll be fine. All right, next up, we have got Berkeley Comstock. Berkeley Comstock. Berkeley Comstock, let's see, where am I going here? Just grab, grabbing a, grab a pack. From my side. Yeah, huh? from your side. Yeah, that's right. Mm. These are my All points, right. supposed to be able to hand out. Well, Berkeley. Well, this is for me, this is for me. Give them to Berks. Hopefully, Bam. as long as it's good. If it's not Teardrop hard, energy, we got the Pikachu, the Farfetch, the Old Amber, Pidgeotto, Nidoqueen, Victory Bell, Big Air Balloon, the Bulbasaur, the, the Growlithe, Growlithe will score, score as will the Blastoise! Blastoise. Yeah! Blastoise EX in the house. Let's see, how's it gonna rank up, Ben? Number nine on the set for the Blastoise. I do think this is maybe one of the lower Blastoises available, but still worth $6.90, we'll round up to seven, seven. plus. The Growlithe will get you to eight. Eight. So all of this will be recontextualized whenever we get to Big Steve, 
who uh, at the moment it's hard to tell where some of these middling points will land. It's just a matter of are you in first place or not. <laughs> That's right. Yes, exactly. So we'll learn we'll learn a lot more very quickly uh, as as we press forward with our various uh, awards here. All right. Next up, we have a former season two champion Omega. Omega. Here we go. Now they are uh, heading in here. Can they have a repeat performance? Can they get something big? More than twenty two points to take on Goddess Princess. Leader. Leader, yes, Goddess Princess Leader, sorry. There we go. Ooh, oh, there we okay. go, so starting off good, one little extra point for you. Yeah, we got the Rhyhorn, the Magikarp, the Oddish, the Mankey, the Eradicate, the Erica's, Erica's Invitation. invitation. The now the alt art version of this card is like the second best in the set, so that'd be a good one to pull. That would be a great one, we did pull one ourselves, actually. We did. Very exciting, so we got the the, the Porygon, rather, the Dratini, and the, the Machamp. Machamp. Oh, just gonna be a two point pack there for Omega, former champion falls hard. You know what, though? All the the last, his worst performance outside of this was also Crown Zenith, so maybe Omega's not like a single strike, not like a uh, a single pack kind of person. Maybe not, maybe they not. Like, they like yeah. to play the long they, game. They're, they're like consistent, They you like know? to build up the combos. Exactly. You know, just one shot, it's boring. You know, right? the, the thing I'll say though about the Machamp card that surprises me, like there's a couple of situations through this set, and I'll bring it up we've run into some of the others, but like the Machamp was a first edition card that like out of the original like Pokemon base set is yeah. like valued like a little bit lower because it came oh, yeah. um, with like a um, like a starter deck. Yeah, you could get like a first edition with Champ. So it's like of all the first edition Pokemon cards, I feel like it's like wildly like undervalued right because like everybody just kind of had one Dude, so, it does feel like for this set they should have had like the the starter pokemon like the the pokemon that came in the starter decks be like ex pokemon yes you know there should yeah. be like a vaporeon ex and a mewtwo and uh um whatever you just said which the champ yes they should have yeah. had and they should have come as starter decks that would have been amazing that would have been cool that, that would have been, been cool yep. yeah yeah but they didn't anyway next up we have got collar cal 41. Was Colin Cow in contention for last place last season? It does look like they were. Um, I'm not sure if that's where they landed. They had 43 cents. Seems a little high, but they did get three points. Or maybe they didn't get it. I, can't I think even they remember. did get it. Maybe in the oh, here we go. Oh, okay, and so. this, on the other flip side, now they're getting um, a multiplier out of the gate. Can we get something big out of it? We've got the Cubone, the Vulpix, the Magnemite, the Lapras. I think it's the first one of those we've seen. Cycling Road, we got a Scyther. That's amazing. A Reverse Hollow Charmander. A Reverse Hollow Ivasaur. And oh, and a Charmander! On the multiplier, what? Oh my gosh, that's Man, absolutely what a amazing. Pack. Our second one of the day at $7.10. We'll round up to eight times two at 16 points, am I uh, correct? 16 points. So, so, so really strong, but still not enough to beat Goddess Princess Leader. There but second Charizard on the day. I know, this was kind of funny though, because it was like it was like base. Middle and I then I know. I was like, yeah. what if we get the Blastoise? I know. Yeah. Like, oh my gosh. Yeah, Blastoise really would have like topped it off just so perfectly. Yeah. Get you, get you a little bit of representation from all three starters there. All three starters. All right. Oh boy. Next up is Becky Borst. Oh man. Now, if you recall last season, Beck Squad got the uh, coveted, was it the Big Steve Award or Quality Eighth Place? I think it was Quality Eighth Place. So Becky was just coming out of a, se a season of pure hatred, it has to be said. It has to be said. You know, we haven't talked to Becky about it at all, but I can make an educated guess. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah no account. doubt. Oh, 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 and Becky Borst coming out buns glazing with a four times multiplier. Can she capitalize? We're about to find out. Oh, and the and Growlithe. The, there we go. Wow. Look at this. And so actually, this will already be worth a point on its You're own right. as well. So we're so already we're up to, yeah, we're already doing good. We're already doing pretty good. So we got the Geodude, <coughs> the Jigglypuff, the Nidorina, which I think maybe is the first one of those we've yeah, seen. I think you're one. right, yeah. The Eradicate, pretty cool artwork on that one. Erica's uh -oh. Invitation. There's the Mr. Mom, which that'll uh, score. The Ditto yeah. will score. Oh, and, and the Blastoise. What is happening? What is going on Oh right my now? gosh, I think, I think Becky Boris is about to come back this season with a vengeance against Beck Squad. We're about to so find out. Yep, one, so six, two, three, four. And then uh, seven, so six dollars, 90 cents for the Blastoise of so seven. Uh, plus, uh, so seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven times four is forty-four points. Forty-four points. Bam. For the lead. There we go. Becky Borst, the Beck Squad is just, you know, she's sitting on the bench, just like, let me in, coach. Let me in. Let me in, coach. Go. This is probably the biggest rivalry in the whole game, as far if, as I uh, can yeah, tell. Yeah, as far as I'm concerned, <laughs> at this point in time, it's just gotten so ridiculously heated at this point in time. But what a great, what a pack great to one pulled. Really, Man. just playing, pulling all the stops, pulling getting the a, getting a starter. Now, granted, there are single cards worth more than 44 points in this set, so that's something to be aware of. But nonetheless, hitting the multiplier on the Blastoise on a five cards that were rare, that's insane. 
Here we go. Well done to Beck Squad. Next up is Dom of uh, Fast and the Furious fame. Perhaps you've heard of him. Of course, yes. No. A lot of notoriety around this one. No doubt. Kind of world famous at this point in time for right. being the lead in a major franchise. Boom. All right. Rock is pummeling. That makes sense. Totally makes sense. Yeah. yeah. We've seen it happen. Execute. Macha. Nitto Queen. Victory Bell. Big Air Balloon. Oh. Critical hit on the Nitto Queens. Man, How that's about cool. that? Okay. Ghastly. And the, the Vile, vile plume. plume. So just a two point pack, I'm afraid, with two times one on the Vile Plume. There we go. Sorry about that, Dom. Let me get You a... missed out on our uh, money pack there. We sure did. Yeah. Let's see. Oh, we've already had that one today as well. Wow. So it's already right. been highlighted. Never mind. Never mind. Don't even have anything to do. Wow, Becky. I'm so impressed with Becky Borst. That was pretty that was pretty fun. I'm trying to remember now. I'm feeling like Becky Borst may have been the one who won quality eighth place. Maybe Beck Squad's the one who's jaded here. Oh, is it? Man, I, I totally remember. We possibly have this? this the wrong way around. Wow, we're gonna need uh we're gonna need to fact check ourselves. Yeah, there we that. go. Ethan will have to come uh, tell us the truth of the matter. because uh, otherwise the <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise we're just oh, beating yeah. up on poor Beck Squad right, no, over there. Yeah, Beck Squad. And they're just they just can't catch a break. Next up is uh Nixie Claw. Nixie Claw. Here we go. Oh Can Nixie Claw who apparently went to school with my wife. Uh, Beth at JMU, or at least was there at the same time. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Yeah. I was, I was yeah. too almost there at the same time. I almost went to JMU, but no, I'm not going there. We've oh, got the metal energy. There we go. Two times multiplier. Let's go. Let's see something big. We got the Dodo, the Tentacool, the Rattata, the Squirtle, Squirtle. the Merino, the Golduck, the Pinsir, the Eevee will not score, the Tanglia. This is really cool artwork, but will not score. And the, the Weezing. Weezing. Well, we haven't seen Weezing yet, but still just going to be a two point pack, sadly, even with the multiplier. It's so exciting when you see the multiplier because it feels like the potential is massive. But, alas, just gas. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty good. Thank that was you. pretty good. Thank you. Oh, here we go. The card we've all been waiting for. It's Big Steve. <laughs> all right, so uh, this, of course, as a reminder, there's a Big Steve award each season. We need to uh, determine uh, whoever it finishes directly in front of Big Steve wins the Big Steve award. So, uh, hopefully Big Steve doesn't get like first place right here. I know. We're about never to see. Know. Yeah, Big you never know. Big Steve's known to have a hot this hand. This will recontextualize a lot of other packs. Here we go. So, man, can you imagine had it been the, the 44 pointer? Here we go. The coughing. The Tangela. The Grimer. Oh, oh the Psyduck, Psyduck, which is his favorite. That is his favorite Pokemon, so that's fun. The Hitmonchan. The Sea King. The Butterfree does not score. The Seedra does not score. Oh! The Charmeleon. That's awesome. The Illustrator Art. And the, the Vaporeon. Vaporeon. So look at that Charmeleon. Fantastic. I wonder if that's like a 16 point card. Let's see. Number 169 yeah. on the set. Let's Folded see. through my pages. 1893. Wow. So it's a 19 and then 20 point card. Wow. So Very Big Steve. Impressive. So Big Steve's actually in second, meaning that what Becky Borst is now currently holding. No, I think. No, you're right. Because no. we have somebody with 22 points. Someone at 22 points. Yes, you're yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Never mind. Okay. So for a second there, Becky Boris would have both been in first place and, and holding Big the Steve. Big Steve. That would have been wild. That would have been wild. So the cool thing about this Charmeleon is that there is it's part of a matching set with a Charmander. That's what he's looking at down here. There's like a Charmander card that sits down here, and then the um, the Charmander version of it and the Charizard version are actually both worth more than the Charmeleon. So if you can pull either of those, that's going to be awesome. But still but a great pull, and once way. again, Big Steve has found a way to like place himself really in the middle of the pack. I mean, and, and I, I would say that as time, this, yeah. yeah, not even really in the middle, but as I feel like time shakes out, probably close to it. Yeah, he's gonna be happy with that card. It's perfectly playable in your Charizard decks. Next up, we have Joe Cathan. Joe Cathan. Bam. This one always reminds me of Joe Nathan, which is kind of like you. Joe Nathan. Your That's full you my name. long form of your name being uh, Jonathan. Yes. Not not uh, just J for long. All right, let's see here. Ooh, uh oh, oh here comes a multiplier. There we go. Okay, so we got the Slowpoke, the Magmar, the Horsey, the Abra, the Sea King, the Butterfree, the Lapras. Oh, the the Star does score. score yep. The Magneton does not. The oh, Vaporeon not again. Back Vaporeon. So it's going to be a four point pack, I believe. Yep, 134 and 139. Let me just make sure I'm keeping my notes proper. All right, so uh, the Magic Big Steve number now is apparently 21. And it would not surprise me if only a single person lands there or no one at all. 22 might do it for um, whoever's sitting in in that spot. Who was that? Uh, Goddess Princess. Goddess Princess leader. Goddess Princess second place. Yeah, you Goddess Princess second place. Yeah. Okay. Goddess Princess runner-up. 
Oh, oh wow, that one really re that's uh, changes yeah. your title a little bit. It, it sounds it, like you almost were goddess princess. Runner up felt very like like beauty pageant where it yeah. was just like it feels ridiculous for the goddess princess to not win every like you know as well. It does. Yeah. Who came in first? Uh, right, I know. You yeah, know. <laughs> <Apparently> <laughs> Becky. <laughs> right, yeah, All we right. know. We know. Next up is Kevin. Kevin. Here we go. Uh, let's see. We'll grab a pack for you here. Kev, game developer. I like to think that Ethan the editor included a shot of <coughs> Kevin from the film Up just squawking after we said Kevin. Kevin. <coughs> here we go. Uh, eyeball energy. Abra. Oh, this uh, set is also unique in that it has a cadabra in it. Although I don't think we've pulled one at all today. Daisy's help. Venomoth. The rapid dash. No, we're looking for the ponytail. The Fero. The Graveler and the, the Electro. Wow, you're Man. starting to hate to see the Electro. You really are. It's just kind of be a single point for Kevin, uh, which does mean I'm starting to feel like maybe Electro is like that last place guy. You know, like that's that because a single point is what you're going to need to get last place. So maybe we should check out what this is going to be. That's true. Yeah, like one zero one on the set is going to be worth twenty one cents. So that that does feel like it could be a great real, contender. Real low. Yeah, unless you can get like a, a single Mister Mime point, that is going to be. Um, that's gonna be like probably be the, good the, one. the next closest thing. All right, next up, final contender for today's rookie of the day. It's Richard Mates, oh. our first time player ever. They're trying to beat 11 points, is that right? Yep, trying to beat 11. Um, below right. average gaming dad came in at 10. All so right. we, we, it's been a bit of a contest there. Wouldn't even surprise me if this was a 12. You yeah, know, it'd like, be right there. Like just because just that's how fate seems to play itself out in most cases. Otherwise, we'll, it's going to Leroy, probably Jenkins. Probably indeed. Let's see, we've got the Teardrop Energy, we've got the Clefairy, the Machop, the Porygon, the Electrobuzz. Is that the first of those we've seen? I think it is. The Muff, the Daisy's Help, the Venomoth, the Persian will not score, the Machoke will not score, and, and the, the Jolteon. Jolteon. Just going to be a single point meaning Leroy is getting the gift card. You're heading to the garden. That's right. Congratulations there, Mr. Jenkins. We hope that you enjoy. Do you think there are people watching who don't get the Leroy Jenkins joke? Ooh. Wow. It feels like it probably. Let us know Possibly. in the comment section down below. If you don't, and also then just look up Leroy Jenkins. And it you'll will figure come it up. Out. Yeah, it will not take long. It won't. Yeah, you'll figure it out. No problem at all. Next up is the Bourbonator. Let's see, how are they going to do for us today? They finished last season with 11 points. Back in season four, they got up to uh, 20. So they've done well in a single pack season before. Yeah, 20, I mean, if you can get in that same zip code, that's a great spot for the big Actually, Steve. Actually, you're right, so. yeah. If you can get to like 21, that's going to be uh, tremendous. Let's see it. Got the grass energy. Not quite going to get you there. Well, we'll see. The ponytail will score, though. There the poly oh, there's the Kadabra. There we go, we finally got one. The first Kadabra printed in like 20 years, so that's kind of cool. Yeah, there's a whole backstory to that whole as well. Whole backstory. Slowbro, the Vile Plume will score, the Tangela will not, and the Articuno. So it's going to be a three-point pack. Yep, I think we've for seen the Bourbonator. those already, so no need to update my notes there. There we go, all right. Thank you, thank you. Not a problem. Right, we're coming down to our final couple of contestants on the day. Next up is Elizabeth. Elizabeth. Elizabeth, uh, here's their one there. This is Elizabeth who likes to sew quilts. I feel like Elizabeth, was she leading at some point? Uh, Elizabeth had 40 points in season four. Mm, so that could have been it, maybe, I don't know. It. Yeah, well, let's see here. Let's see, we got the- uh, Another got salad the, energy. Salad energy, we got the, the coughing, the tanglia, the grimer, the psyduck, the rapidash. Have we seen a single polyrath today? I don't think so. Maybe not. So. No, we have seen, I think, one. Maybe. Oh, okay. Yeah, the Nidorina, we got the Raticate, the Nidorino will not score, the Kadabra <laughs> again. <laughs> Uh, we'll not score though. Oh, the, Gengar. the Gengar! Look at that! I love the art on the Gengar. That That's is really cool. Fun. This this to me gives like total like sketching on your classroom papers. Like like it's a little bit like imperfect. The proportions don't feel exactly right, but like yeah. it's kind of glorious for that. It is good. Uh, but anyway, our first one and still just worth a single point there. Number ninety four on the set for Elizabeth. Just gonna be a single point. Oh yeah, we should write down what the value is because it could be worse than. The electrode. It is 38 cents. So oh, it's not. Yeah. Yep, so. 38. Better than the electrode, but not good enough for last place, I'm afraid. Gengar is too cool for school. Uh, next up, this is going to be our final pack of the day going to Annika, like Harmonica. All right, Annika has been playing with us for a long time. Her card is full of numbers over here. It is always really cool to see, like when the, the players who've got like some like veteran status going on, it's mm -hmm. like, like a really marked up card. All right, let's see. How do we get? How are we doing, Annika? We have Fireball Energy up the top. We have the Goldine, the Nidoran, the Ghastly. Last pack magic. Last pack Paris, magic. Traveler. 
Protective goggles, the Arcanine, the, oh, the Grabber. That's going to give you something. The Drowsy and the, the Mister Mime. Oh, oh so oh, if not for dude. the Grabber, this would have put you in. It would have put you in place. last place. Oh no! Whoops! So. That is going to put you at th an unfortunate three points, Annika. Wow, they was so close, except for the Grabber pull there. Man, well there we go, you guys. Our uh, first. Episode of 151 is in the books. Big Steve has got 20 points. Our leader, uh, Becky Borst. Becky Borst has Becky 44. Becky Borst has 44 points, which is perfectly beatable, but also, who knows, maybe that'll carry her to the end. We'll and we're, just have to see. We're gonna find out. Yeah, this is, this, it's so much fun though. I really can't tell you, I feel like the nostalgia is just overflowing, kind of like getting to go through and like pull all these very We didn't packs. pull a single one of those Aerodactyls. We did today. not pull one yeah. of the Aerodactyls, who always reminds me of, Ron Perlman? Ron Perlman? Ron Perlman. <laughs> like of like Hellboy fame? I believe so. Hang okay, on what, that on reminds you of Aerodactyl? Ron Perlman, I think, looks like Aerodactyl. You don't see it? You know, I've never thought about it before, but I do see it. Yes. What, what you don't see it? Ron, what, you don't see, what you don't see it? Right there. Okay. I literally All pulled right. Ron well, Perlman uh, out okay. of my. Someone cast Ron Perlman for Aerodactyl, I guess. In an upcoming feature, feature just, film. Just to scream like Aerodactyl, just do the Pokemon voice. It'd be absolutely amazing. I yeah. think he's got like a deep voice. Too, yeah, so yeah. Like, it'd be like, like a, a really very good, like, different. Because I think like, it's like a high pitch. A lot of his moves are like supersonic and stuff. Right, like very like yeah. shrieky. But so maybe maybe that's like the thing. It's like quietly like. Dactyl. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Like if you like run into Aerodactyl in a ball, it's like, so, you yeah. know. But then like in, in gameplay, it's mo much more like, like shrieky. All right, I can't all right. Do it. Someone go catch an Aerodactyl and name it Ron Perlman for Ben, and then share it to us on Twitter. Please do, please Don't do. do. Uh, guys, as ever, thank you so much for your support over on Patreon. If you too would like to become a future box breakers patron, it's super simple. All you have to do is head on over to patreoncom so Gaming and select any of the box breakers tiers. We'll have a link to that in the description down below. Otherwise, until next time, Hariyama! Oh, you no. forgot! You never forgot! I'm sorry. Do you want to try again? No. Three, two, one. Hariyama! Hariyama!